So folks, remember what I keep on saying over and over again, that old Donnie is a man consumed, absolutely consumed by terror right now. And that fear is coming from all sorts of directions in various ways. But at his core, his single biggest concern is becoming irrelevant in general, certainly, but in particular to his base of supporters, people that he needs to feed his ego, people who he needs to keep on giving him money, even though he provides no value to them, even though he never does anything he promises for those people and all of that. But also, he needs those people to stay active and angry so they can spread his conspiracy theories to keep him relevant, but also act as a sort of threat, an ever-present threat to society that if you go after Donald Trump politically and especially legally, these people will be mobilized to be very angry and potentially very aggressive and physically violent if it comes to it. That Donald Trump wants to maintain his movement so that he can always threaten, even if only implicitly, even if only philosophically, another J6. And so long as he has that, he says to himself, I'm safe from justice because people will be afraid to hold me to justice. But two things just happened in the past day that tear that down and leave Trump very, frankly, like naked and terrified in the whole situation. The first is more brand new, really candid, polling and focus group data. We've talked about this, but there's another new episode of it, a new iteration that shows that fundamentally Trump's people, even if they don't hate him, some of them now hate him, but even if they don't, they're exhausted and sick and tired of him. And also Trump encouraged a massive rally, demanded a massive rally. The first one since his magnificent defeat a couple weeks ago and no one showed up. It is single-handedly one of the worst Trump style of events we've ever seen and my goodness guys it shows he is done joining me now to discuss we have pollster and communications analyst frank luntz back with us and he has been talking to republican voters okay so frank we have a clip of this um but first just give me an overview of these are all people who had voted for trump and now after the midterms they feel differently most of them do feel differently and most of them voted for trump twice not just once so these were part of his core base and they didn't even know what the conversation was going to be about because I didn't tell them. So we got into this and I was shocked at what they had to say. OK, so let's watch a clip of this. OK, if the race was between and you had to choose now, who would you vote for, Donald Trump or Ron DeSantis? Raise your hands physically if you would choose Trump in that contest. One, two, three. Raise your hand if you would choose Ron DeSantis. All the rest of you. So what did they tell you about that? Uh, and hopefully we'll play the clip of it. They told me that they're tired. They're just worn out. They still believe in what Donald Trump said, and they believe in what he tried to do. But they're tired of the chaos. They're tired of, I use the phrase Michigas, but I don't think Trump understands those words. And they're just simply worn out. And they want someone who they believe will bring their ideas, their ideologies, their vision to success. And they simply don't think that's Donald Trump anymore. They also told you that they thought it was too much about Donald Trump. So here's that moment. Let's watch that. Not too much about Donald Trump. And he used to be the stand-in for the establishment and, uh, and, and other people against us, and then now it's all about him. I don't think they voted for Biden, they voted against Trump, and I think DeSantis gives them to vote for him and not against him. So interesting, Frank, because I'm not sure Donald Trump has changed. Well, I'm not sure how he would react watching this right now. I think he'd find some reason to dismiss it. And I know we're going to be talking about Jay Leno, and I want to foreshadow it. Because Leno got involved in an argument that I had with Donald Trump. How? So because Trump tried to get me fired from my news outlets. <clears throat> I worked for Fox News at the time and CBS. And Trump went out of his way because he hates these focus groups. He hates listening to real people. And they had a lot of negative things to say about him. And he blew up. And Leno, as I will say later on, came to my aid. But we've got polling data now that was done by the premise poll. Uh, completed on Saturday evenings. This is 48 hours. 
And it has Joe Biden now defeating Donald Trump by six points. So I wanted to start with that data because it really does hammer in, guys, how people are just tired. And like, yeah, I think part of that, of course, is like your midterm election happens. People are kind of like getting ready for the holidays. I think that's part of it. Like, to be fair, I think even supporters of the Democrats are probably like, I'm a little tired right now. I just, I got other things to deal with. But with Trump, it seems more permanent. It seems like there's been some sort of sea change, a real, a real narrative shift, a real philosophical shift where Trump, even in 2020, one thing you can say about him is he never got a majority of the people. Like Trump never had a majority, but what what he always had was a really, really, really loyal base, a more loyal base than anyone else had when you put it down, even even like Republican or Democrat. And those people are either ditching him or are just tuning out. And that's really bad for him. Again, it's bad for his ego. It's bad for his fundraising. But but it's also bad because if there's no mob to threaten people with, then what does Trump have? He doesn't have the law on his side. He doesn't have facts on his side. Doesn't have the best lawyers. Doesn't have any of that. One thing he did have was people like him and Lindsey Graham saying, and a lot of people believing it because of what happened on J6, that if you go after Trump politically or legally, there'll be riots in the streets. And now that's not happening. Now, remember what Donald Trump did just yet. We cited it earlier in my, my earlier videos today, but he said it yesterday where he demanded and has been demanding for a couple weeks now, massive immediate protests and mobilization and laws and all of this in Arizona in particular saying that my people in the thousands and the tens of thousands must immediately get out there and start making change to get our candidates in to help Carrie Lake win because it was taken from her and blah, blah, blah. And guys, it was single-handedly the worst event in like Trump land history. Listen to this. This is a Trump event because they are citing him and everything and there's basically no one there. Did I yesterday. Why don't you tweet out? Give me freedom or give me death. Give me liberty. No, he said freedom. Oh, okay. I didn't hear it. And we, we keep waiting for the legislators to do our jobs. We keep waiting for the legislators. Who here is committed to stay until they actually revoke? <laughs> I'll be here by myself. So you can see they're trying to cite that Trump quote that we covered earlier today and they can't even get that right because of course Trump said it wrong. So the, everyone is kind of surprised and then it just gets even worse. We have somebody trying to tout the, like the massive crowd that's building up. And again, like, there's no one there. Here at the AZ revote rally, things are not started yet, but there's lots of people accumulating, great people. People who love this country. Right? Like, there's no one there, guys. This is what Trump called for. Like, Trump is demanding this. This is something Trump commanded. The God Emperor Trump went out there on social media and all of this, telling his people to gather, gather immediately, gather in large crowds to demand justice for our gal Carrie and Blake Masters and because they were treated unfairly by the system and we need to protest before it's too late because we need to have them declared the winner or have an election do-over. And the event, like Donald Trump wanted it to be called essentially, was the AZ revote thing, which is to say, like, either give the our guys the victory or at the very least do a re-election neither of which are going to happen, but to, to put, to put Donald Trump and his people back in power and it didn't work. But if anything, they were arguing with each other at the event. Of time. Nothing's going to happen.
And I was mad as hell. And I said, I'm not going to take this. I'm going to get involved. I'm going to get off the damn couch. I'm going to talk to my friends and I'm going to get involved. I listened to Dan from the Precinct Project on War Room and I thought, you know what? I can do that. I got involved. Right? Like they were just arguing with each other and complaining with each other at this dumb, dumb event. Like it's just, it's, 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 it's a sign, yes, of the, of the movement's ridiculousness. But I, I, we guys, we can't ignore the fact. We can't ignore the reality that this is nothing like 2020. Because with 2020, Donald Trump clearly lost. But remember what happened when he called for protests. When he called for rallies, whether they were Trump rallies with him in attendance or Trump rallies organized by him in absentia, it doesn't matter. They're both Trump rallies. When he called for them, they came. Say what you will, they listened. Remember when he called for protest in Detroit and they, 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 they mobbed the Detroit voting count headquarters. Remember that? You guys remember this stuff, right? They, they were like there and they were like, stop the count. And, uh, you know, and, and in Arizona, they were like, count every vote. And there were massive Trump groups in like every swing state gathering in massive numbers because Trump told them to. And this time it didn't happen. And the only difference this time is that Trump is far weaker. No one's buying it. Yeah, you have like the Kerry Lake continues to to spread the big lie, but pretty much everyone else has conceded. Masters has conceded. Almost every high profile Trumper that lost has conceded, right? They have. The difference this time is that Trump is weaker. His rally has failed. No one was there. And when they were there, they were either unable to quote him correctly or fighting amongst one another. This is where we're at. Donald Trump knows that not only is movement falling, when the police, when the DOJ, when prosecutors see that, they don't even have to worry now about a dangerous Trump movement like they used to. I don't even know if he can marshal another J6 if he can't even get people to rally for a revote.